TikTok. meltdowns, whatever you may call it. If you are a mother or a father or a grandparent of a one to four year old and probably up, I'm sure you're dealing with these at least once or twice a day. Um, maybe less, maybe you've already gotten it under control, but if you're anything like me, you and trying to understand them is where I'm at right now in my journey with parenthood. So I want to share with you a couple of things that I've learned when it comes to tantrums. All right, so let's first start with the fact that tantrums are not your child trying to manipulate you, um, make you be frustrated or test you. They're not intentionally doing those things. Is it their job to test things and uh, experiment with cause and effect and see what kind of things get a reaction out of you? Yes, that is part of their cognitive learning. That is how they develop their understanding for the world, for you, for everything. However, they're not doing these things intentionally to um, upset you. If it does upset you, then they're learning cause and effect. They're learning that if I do this, mom has this other side of her come out. She might be angry. She might yell. That's a weird sound coming out of my mom. She might get emotional and get hyped up. And that is so unique. Let me see. Let me try that again. Or they might be learning, hmm. When I do that, I get what I want. So let me keep trying it. So that's where your child's head is, usually with tantrums. Um, again, understanding them is gonna be key to getting on top of them and not letting them take over your life and make you become this monster who just wants to pull their hair out and say, I don't understand why my angel child is acting like such a sour patch. That's what me and my husband call my sweet, sweet daughter because she will go from the sweetest little angel baby to just a little sour, sour patch. All right, so let's talk second thing regarding tantrums. Like I said, they're not trying to do those things to you, but if you do have those reactions, they're going to increase the tantrums and the frequency and all of that. So tip number two is going to be trying to not have those reactions to tantrums. And how do we do that? That's easier said than done. Trust me. I myself try very hard to have a gentle, respectful, intentional style of parenting. However, I am human. I am a child of I'm an adult of childhood trauma. I have triggers and I have overstimulation big time. So when my child is screaming or repeating herself or um, doing things that just make me bonkers, it is hard to control those reactions in myself. So how I have found that I can control those reactions is by setting boundaries beforehand. Setting boundaries for myself and letting my daughter know those are my boundaries and they are not going to be crossed are huge. Um, for me at first, um, I would be the parent that if she was at the back of my legs crying and wanting to be picked up, I would say, okay, I'm not going to deprive her of my love. I might as well pick her up. But then I found myself feeling frustrated and just feeling burnt out by the end of the day. So now if I say, hey, I'm going to go cook dinner, you're going to hang out with dad, I stick with that. I let my husband take over and if she's at the back of my legs, I can get down on her level and tell her and remind her, but I also stick with it and just say, I love you so much, but this is something that I'm going to do by myself right now. I'm going to need you to go be with dad and I turn and I continue what I'm doing and it gets easier with time. That is huge because in the beginning, my child seemed like she was not gonna move on and would throw a fit in that moment, but as I've stuck with that boundary and I've been consistent with it, 
she has learned to respect that space of mine and say, okay, mom, mom's serious. She's not going to pick me up right now. Let me move on. So that has helped me a lot with not losing my ish during the hard times and during the tantrums. Tip number three, when it comes to tantrums, not trying to fix everything during the tantrum. This was something that I was trying to talk with my daughter through, trying to coach her through, trying to explain what she was feeling, trying to explain why uh, we do this or don't do this or how we should do it better. No, no, no. Mistake on my end. So if you're in that same boat, um, tips I have learned on how to not do that is to be present and to accept their feelings, let them know that you hear them and you see them. You're not upset with them because if your emotions are getting heightened during that time, their emotions are going to continue to get heightened. So just being present for them, however that may look for your child. You know your child best, so some children might want a hug during that time. My child does not. My child is like, don't touch me or else it's going to get worse. So I give her space, but I'm present. I'm not ignoring her. Um, I am calm and trying to just be there for her and say, you seem to be upset. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. I'm here afterwards whenever you're ready to talk, whenever you're ready to calm down. And I'm just there. So that's a big one. Um, and afterwards, we can talk about what happened if she was misbehaving and I needed her to learn a lesson from that behavior then we will talk about it afterwards not during the fit because you go red in that time whenever you're mad and you really are not listening imagine if you were upset with a friend or a spouse and of course we would not be having a tantrum like a child does but we might be emotional or highly you know angry or frustrated or whatever it may be in that time somebody telling you how to fix it in that time is the last thing that you need to hear what you really need to hear is just that somebody is present with you they understand that you're upset and they are sorry that you're feeling that way they're compassionate and empathetic but they're there and that's it all right so the last tip tip number four for dealing with tantrums really treat your child as much as you can as a capable communicating understanding human um, they are a tiny human but they are capable of understanding things and if you talk to them in that way you may have a better chance of avoiding tantrums altogether whenever you just make decisions for your child without communicating it to them or you just pick them up and remove them from somewhere or just oh we're leaving the playground now let's go they are likely to have a fit because they had no say in that they weren't prepared for it um, if you just remove something out of their hands without explaining yourself they're likely to have a fit so understanding that they are learning how to interact with people by the way that you are interacting with them is huge. So if you don't want them snatching things out of people's hands, don't snatch things out of their hands. If you want them to be able to cope with leaving somewhere, explain it to them and let them be a part of that process. Hey, we're gonna be leaving the zoo soon, so let's make sure we start saying goodbye to all the animals and make it a fun thing. So that can be something, again, all of these things are something that happen over time. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. They might still lose it the first time that you do it. Don't give up on it. Don't think, okay, that was a cute tip, but it didn't work for my child. Try it again. My daughter now, it, the very first time we left the zoo, I mean, I was holding, she was kicking, she was screaming, and it was just like, I'm so sorry, we're leaving. I told you we were leaving. What's going on? Why is she freaking out? But now she understands, and I tell her, and she simply waves goodbye to the animals. She says bye and walks on out with no problem. So talking, communicating, and letting them really just be a part of your process and understanding 
what is happening to them is huge. In addition to um, leaving places and stuff like that, just letting them be a part of decisions is going to be big. Toddlers are really just wanting to be in charge of themselves a little bit right now. They want to show that they are capable of making decisions. So making decisions like what clothes they're going to wear for that day, what PJs are they going to wear, what cup are they going to drink out of, um, what animal do they want to go see first when you're at the zoo. Those kind of things don't make a huge difference in your life, but they make a big difference for them if you don't give them a say in it. So simply giving them two to three options. Don't just give them their whole closet and say, pick whatever you want. Pick a couple of things that can be um, guided and helped and coached through and let them make that decision. Um, putting clothes on my child was a huge headache and sometimes we still have hard times. But now that I let her make that decision, I've now avoided those tantrums. So those are my tips for working through tantrums. Again, this is not a foolproof um, you're never going to have a tantrum. Everything's going to be peaches and cream. No, but it will lessen the amount of tantrums. It will help your child in the long run be able to really explain their emotions and be able to help themselves work through those tantrums because that's kind of the goal here. You really are trying to raise your child to be um, capable of handling their own feelings and their own emotions. Hope that helps. If you have any questions regarding tantrums or just need a empathetic person to say, you are not alone, sister, let me know. I am here. Feel free to reach out on any of my social media pages and follow along if you are interested in my parenting journey, learning as they grow with Alicia Foster. Bye.